Apparently, data is the new oil and data science is the sexiest job of the 21st century with huge demand that is growing year on year. So why does it feel so hard to find a data science job right now? Well, in this video, I'm going to explain exactly why and also give you some tips and advice to increase your chances of getting hired. Let's get into it. It's no secret that times are tough at the moment. There are loads of terrible things going on in the world, financial stability has decreased, and people are in general just struggling. Overall, the economy is clearly not in a good position, and this causes businesses to really suffer. In the UK, interest rates were 0.25% at the start of 2022. However, they are now at 5.25% which is a massive, massive increase, especially when you consider that the interest rates, at least in the UK, have been practically nothing for the past two decades or so. An increase in interest rates means the borrowing goes up or the cost of borrowing increases. This makes it harder for companies with loans to stay cash flow positive and have better financial stability. In extreme cases, it can even lead to bankruptcy. With this increase in risk, Venture capitalists are less likely to invest their money into riskier companies like tech startups in case they default on their loan. This decrease in funding and VCs being more selective of the companies they invest in leads to companies having less money. And because they have less money overall, it means they're more kind of conservative when they're hiring due to their tighter budget. Therefore, we kind of have less jobs available in the market for this reason. Layoffs have been everywhere in tech recently, mainly due to the recession that is caused by the current economic condition like I just discussed. According to a BBC article, around 24,000 tech workers were laid off in January 2024 alone. This includes big tech companies like Microsoft and Google. There has also been massive layoffs at other big tech companies across the past two years. Spotify cut 17% of their workforce back in December 2023. And Twitter, since Elon Musk came in charge of the company in April 2022, has laid off around 80% of its total staff. These companies have some of the world's best data scientists, software engineers, and general tech professionals. Securing a position at one of these top tech firms is really hard work, and you really have to know your stuff, and you're likely one of the top practitioners in your field. The problem now is that all these fantastic and talented people are now also looking for a job alongside like the regular data scientists out there, which makes the market really tough and really increases the talent density pool who are looking for a job. And when you couple that with the number of tech job openings in 2024, it's less than half what it was in back in 2022, it makes the market even tougher and finding a job even harder. Since Harvard Business Review published that data science is the sexiest job in the 21st century back in 2012, Loads of people want to be data scientists, and the number of data scientists has also increased. Loads of people are taking online courses, doing machine learning masters. I mean, there's even three-year bachelor degrees dedicated data science, which to me is quite amazing, considering how new the field is compared to other areas like maths and physics. From all of this, the supply of people wanting to be data scientists, particularly for their junior roles, is increasing exponentially year on year. However, as we discussed earlier, the demand of data science jobs is not really keeping up with its current supply rate. Therefore, we have a really imbalanced supply versus demand. And because there's less jobs and more people, this also makes it very difficult to find your first role. As my good friend Matt Chapman wrote in his latest Medium article, ML models inside Jupyter Notebooks have a business value of $0. Gone are the days where data scientists would simply build POCs in Jupyter Notebooks. Senior management practically get no benefit from this, and just doing model.fit and .predict just doesn't cut it anymore. There seems to be an increase in trend in people wanting to become full stack data scientists or machine learning engineers. These roles are basically someone who can own the whole machine learning end-to-end -end system and implement it into production themselves. From my perspective, this kind of evolution of the data role seems natural. We now have libraries like PyTorch, Scikit-Learn, and XGBoost, which abstract and do a lot of the heavy lifting for us, so we don't need to build algorithms directly from scratch anymore. Not to mention, we also have access to some of the biggest state-of-the-art models out there, 
we can simply use something like Hugging Face to ping an API, and there we have like the best large language models, the best convolutional neural networks. So we don't even need to train things ourselves locally. We can use an existing model trained by some of these big tech companies on vast amounts of data, and we can use that in our application. Unfortunately, many data science degrees, boot camps and courses, don't really teach you the whole like operations and the implementation side of ML as much as the theoretical side. Now, don't get me wrong, I've said in previous videos that knowing the theory behind algorithms is really important, and it is, because you can't be a top data scientist without having that theoretical baseline knowledge. However, companies want you to generate value. They can no longer afford simply investing in R&D like they used to before due to these tighter budgets due to their economic conditions at the moment. To overcome this, try to upskill yourself in model deployment and software engineering. I appreciate that it's really hard to land your first role at the moment, particularly if you have no previous experience. My best advice is just to keep going, keep learning and keep applying. I have a whole separate video explaining the exact things you should do in order to make your data science application stand out. But I will share the key points here to give you that extra edge over other candidates. Some ideas to try are write technical articles and share them. Do Kaggle competitions and also try and do quite well in them. Create a detailed website or portfolio about your data science skills. And if you can, try and present or publish in conferences. Many data scientists, particularly in the entry level positions, won't have any of these. So they'll immediately give you that extra edge over other applicants. Other advice I can give you is that try to leverage your network as much as possible to get that first foot into the door, at least in the interview stage. If you are transitioning into data science from another industry or field, apply for data science positions that's similar to your previous experience. For example, let's say you worked in marketing, well, apply for marketing data science positions because you have that slight edge due to your domain knowledge in that area. And another thing you can try is to apply for similar roles like data analyst or data engineer. These roles may be easier for you to get and then maybe after a year, you can then try to transition into data science. This will be advantageous because you've already worked in data and you've probably picked up a lot of useful skills in those similar roles that will be directly kind of applicable to data science. Obviously, you should do what feels right for you, but these tactics may be helpful if you're struggling. If you want more data science advice like this, then make sure you check out my weekly newsletter, Dishing the Data. I send it every Monday morning, and it's all about my thoughts and experiences as a practicing data scientist. If that sounds interesting, I'll leave a link in the description below for you to check out.